I moved to Aberdeen Deaf School, uh, Aberdeen Boarding Deaf School, and um, I think I was about three and a half when I started school. It was an early age of three and a half, not your typical age of four or five. It was three and a half for profoundly deaf children. Um, it was a boarding school because my parents lived in Huntley and I was their only child and they missed me terribly. So they decided to s sell the family business um, and move to Aberdeen so they can be closer to me. When I was about six, uh, When I was about six, uh, that's when I, uh, I realised that we lived in Aberdeen and not Huntley anymore. Back when I was at school, uh, it was the oral method and uh, I was very frustrated through my education. Um, you know, I remember signing in class. You weren't allowed to sign in class at all. And if you did sign in class, you'd get punishment. You'd get a ruler smacked off the top of your fingers or you'd get the strap. Um, if you were naughty or you were having to learn something, you had to sit on your hands but you, so you couldn't learn, uh, sorry, so you couldn't sign with your hands. Uh, so we were forced to, to have oral communication. And I remember, I remember one time we were all, we sit, the class was sitting around the table and we had headphones on and we used to, we used to muck around and turn the, the, the volume up and down and it, the teacher would get annoyed. But the teacher would speak to the class with something covering our mouth, you know, and to me, I could hear that she was saying something because I heard noises but I had no idea what she was saying. Luckily, my friend who was sitting next to me uh, he was able to understand and able to hear a little bit more than I could and uh, the teacher would put a paper over her mouth and says now boys and girls when I call your name s let me know that you're here and um, of course the teacher said Len Mellis are you here and obviously I couldn't hear what she was saying so my friend would kick me under the table and say Len she's saying your name so then I would then say yes miss I'm here you know, so back in the days, although the kids were taught oral communication, it wasn't a success. The children knew how to get through the day-to-day -day class by cheating, by kicking each other, telling each other when we're getting taught and things. Um, at the age of 16, I left school. Uh, I had no idea what I wanted to do. No one had taught me about the kind of jobs that I might have when I left school. Um, you know, no one, no one ever spoke about that. Now, education in my day was a totally different thing to what education is now. It's fair to say that one and one is two. Yes, that's fine. But I'm afraid that the teaching staff were not trained to handle someone with visual impairment. They had absolutely no idea. So much so <clears throat> that in my primary school days, having said that I couldn't see the board because the blackboard was the focal point of the classroom, you were dependent on seeing that. I couldn't. So I was immediately shifted to the back of the class. Now, as we all know, uh, we're all enlightened now, that would be seen as quite bad and would be taken very seriously by the authorities and that would simply not happen now. <coughs> However, I struggled through uh, mainstream school. I was, the only, the only saving grace I suppose was that I enjoyed music and uh, music has played a very important part in my life uh, for a very long time. However, it was ultimately decided that I should get myself to the Royal Blind School in Edinburgh, which I, <coughs> I um, went to. I was there for four years. But in my primary school days, there was one teacher who tried to persuade my mother to get me there earlier. 
Now, it was just in wartime, uh, the Second World War was on, and mother didn't want to see me out of her sight, and I respect that. Uh, it made it difficult, but I respect it because parents um, had to make sure their children were safe, etc. So anyway, I ultimately arrived at Royal Blind School, I would say far too late to really work at a good education. And it's probably, well it hasn't affected me too much I have to say, because I'm, <clears throat> I'm still, I'm still uh, going on doing other things as people know. However, the, <clears throat> the great thing from my point of view in Edinburgh was the music. I mean, I had to learn other things too. But the music was something which I found a great help. I learned to, <clears throat> I learned to play piano and organ. The school had an organ there with three keyboards to it and a full footboard. So it was great. Thoroughly enjoyed that. I was directed to a church choir in Edinburgh, to St Peter's in Edinburgh, and we were drafted in to sing, sometimes to sing with the cathedral choir, St Mary's Cathedral at Palmerston Place at the West End. And that I found totally fulfilling. When I was uh, when I was I was diagnosed with scoliosis in my early years. I think it was my mum said I was about three year old. This was my mum was okay and she was looking after me as <laughs> rolled her birth out changes. Uh, and she said that you know, I didn't understand obviously be that young, I uh, didn't understand why I had to wear a Boston brace and, and that kind of thing. This is way back in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, I, I realised I was different. And what I mean by that, I was having to get special treatment. I had to get taxis to school. I had to uh, get out of class about 10 minutes before the bell went to get to the, the canteen because if I was knocked over in the rush, uh, I was bullied, very much so. I was bullied because I was different. I was not standing straight. I was standing like that. So kids could be so bloody cruel. They could be really nasty, and that's why I've I've got a better understanding. Of, you know how when I see kids nowadays, you know, making fun of other kids either with additional sport needs or, or physical disabilities. And to say it could happen to anybody. You know, it's it's one of those things you understand. But as a kid, you're trying to understand yourself. Why are people making fun of me? You know, okay, I was called four eyes, you know, for my glasses and stuff like that, but I can't see without my glasses, so I have to wear that. So, with, as a kid, you felt different. I was the first person in the canteen, so when everybody else came in, why is he different? And that, that changed me a lot because I was very, eh, I was in class, I wouldn't speak to anybody, I wouldn't speak to anybody, eh, I was very, what you would probably call a, a class loner because no to you know, chance to speak to people, you don't want to really be you able know, to speak to anybody. So I had to get taken home early by a taxi and uh, well, even with swimming, swimming was just, I didn't want to swim, so I didn't want to take in um, consider, um, participation in sports and stuff because, uh, again, when you've got a curvature, it makes you very self-conscious. So having two operations having to go down the trauma, going taking time off school, having to take the school work with you. A lot of people think you get special treatment, but it's not, it's just trying to adjust to your lifestyle. So, you know, I got an operation when I was 13 years old, and uh, that transformed me. You know, I still got it, and it's still sore these days, but back, in, back then, you know, it was tough. I went through days, I was enrolled in mainstream school, days I've had me, I went through, and um, I'm not really sure to say, but, but, but I, I, was, I was bullied, I played quite a lot, you know, I mean, bullying and abuse is kind of for the rest of your life, kind of thing.
That's why the St. Mitz Day started, you know, and the school, other powers went to, because it was disabled and adopted. And the thought system, I mean, my mind's always been okay, but luckily. But the, um, I was able to go to school, mainstream school, so that's why they sent me there. Um, one of the best things I think uh, that happened to me was that I had to leave home. Now, that seems an odd thing to say, um, but when I was 17 and a half and I, I did get a, a place at university, um, because I lived in Brechin, there was no choice but to move up to Aberdeen, which is where my mum's family all were. My brother was already at university there. And in those days, although I used a walking stick to get around, I really didn't think of myself as being disabled. I did have a car. I was one of the few students in the 1970s. You know, students just didn't have cars. I had a car. I have to say my friends abused the privilege of me having a car. They thought that that, that was a good ride home from the pub every night. But um, anyway, I had a car because I couldn't really walk very far. And in those days, the only thing that I suppose I had, which really marked me out as someone with a disability, was I had an orange badge for parking. Around about 1976, the wonderful Alf Morris, who became Lord Morris but was an MP at the time, came up with the idea of a mobility allowance for people who had extra costs because of their mobility. And I was one of the first to actually qualify for the mobility allowance. I think it was probably around 1977. Um, and at that time, I was trying to get into the college to become a teacher. Um, but at the same time, I was recognising that my disability was gradually getting worse. Um, and I, I had the assessment to get into college on the same day as I had the assessment for the motor, the, the, not the motability, not in those days, the mobility allowance. So, I, so one was looking for, to see just how disabled I was, the other was looking to see how non-disabled I was. And I think that kind of dilemma is, is very often is still with disabled people, that how much do they reveal about their disability for fear that if the person who's interviewing them thinks that they've got too many barriers because of the disability, they end up not getting the job. Um, and I had that struggle um, way back in the 1970s. But luckily, I did get into college. I did eventually um, become a teacher. Um, and the rest is history. I was a teacher for, for 18, 19 years after that. Mm -hmm.